And then Grandma slaps the hell out of Jabba. For a 60-something-year-old woman, she had powerful hands. <laughs> Here we go at old school. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. I would appreciate that. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. Yes indeed, we are continuing to reform this neckbeard. Ed, not the one from 90 Day Fiance, though that's another disaster that we might touch on sooner rather than later. Maybe in the new year, once I figure out how to dodge all these copyright claims and whatnot. <laughs> Because YouTube be crazy. I also might post it over on Odyssey. Oh, did I mention I started uh, basically a clone of my channel over on Odyssey? O-D-Y-S-E-E dot -E com, uh, presumably slash Red X, although I can't be too sure. Maybe you just search me up, you know? There's no ads or anything. They pay you in like a, a three cent cryptocurrency, but I figure maybe if their copyright is a little better, I can upload some exclusive content there. Might be kind of cool. I've got a few To Catch a Predator episodes that uh, need to go up somewhere. They're just sitting on my hard drive. I know not why, but um, <laughs> maybe that's a good place for them. Little Patreon exclusive content, perhaps. But anyways... What we're focusing on today, or what we're supposed to be focusing on, is that reforming of a neckbeard. I thought I was going to do, uh, you know, all of the final parts, but there's three of them, so I just decided to knock out one for Christmas. Merry Christmas, by the way. <laughs> I hope you got what you wanted. And then we'll get the other videos into uh, another final video down the road. Because it's late, I've been doing some last minute Christmas shopping, and uh, I'm pretty tired, so... <laughs> This is what I could do for you today. I do apologize, but uh, I hope that you'll enjoy it. So let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this neckbeard stories cringe. My journey to reform a neckbeard, part four family ties. Oh, people was talking in the comments. I was like, this basically wraps the Ed arc. You could just be like, he lived a happy life, the end. But no, he's got his parents poisoning his mind, as was pointed out to me. And uh, yeah, he, he's got some familial problems to deal with. So I'm looking forward to diving into that because I always love seeing how a neck beard is born, the psychology of how they're made. Anywho, been gone longer than expected. Sorry, everyone. Oh, don't worry about it, use a random teacher. I like to wait till the saga's up so I could space them out at my own speed. <laughs> Classes are in the full swing and students keep me crazy busy, but here I am and here it goes. Today we'll be diving into the biggest part of addressing Ed's issues, his family. This is full of ups and downs, so please bear with me. Let's go. Well, we're used to that around here. I prefer more ups than downs, but sometimes it just can't be that way. We take what we get. <laughs> so this begins in the summer of 2019. Quite a time jump. Since Ed and I were from the same hometown, we spent a lot of time together. Ed had not seen his parents in almost a year, and let me remind you that they were not okay with his being gay in the slightest. Huh. I'm trying to think of another reason that they might be against gay people, but <laughs> really it's generally just the uh, evangelicals. I don't think I've seen a legitimate, like, root cause of homophobia outside of that one, <laughs> specifically. So, uh, if you know of some, do let me know. I love to be corrected. But me, knowing that you eventually have to face your fears, I knew that he would eventually have to see his parents face to face. Yeah, just give them the talk. If they don't like it, okay, cut them out. Let me know when you change your mind. <laughs> It is difficult, but it's not like a life-ending decision. At that point, it is the parents burning the bridge, not you. So, don't sweat it. But yeah, because it's better to just rip the bandage off, we drove to his old house to confront his family. Which seems like it happened really quick, but <laughs> there's like two years between that the last story and this one. So, I'm sure he was working up the nerve during that time. When we finally pull up, his house is small and dingy and falling apart. 
One of those houses that you would think is abandoned, but are shocked to find out that there are people that actually live there. That is such a sad situation. Just imagine poor little Ed growing up in this house, man. You want to know why he lived in garbage during his college days? Uh, because he grew up in garbage. Ugh. This was an extremely telling sign that his home life might have been a factor in his beardy behavior. Yes, the research confirms that. When we enter the den, the front of his house looks like his room before we basically threw the entire room away. Trash and boxes and cat shit and pee and anything else that you can imagine. A smell three times worse than Ed's room and cats running around everywhere. Yeah, be glad Ed didn't have cats. Untrained cats <laughs> gotta mess the house up quicker than anything else. This family had like 20 cats, and I am not kidding you, literally, around 20 cats. Then we hear a voice shout, Is that you? <laughs> and out from the corner comes Ed's father, the beard patriarch himself. Yes, uh, sort of pleased to meet you, kind of, I guess. <laughs> His dad was a semi-normal looking man, your typical middle-aged American, slightly overweight, but not a bad looking guy. He also liked nerdy things and would geek out and play magic with his son, as I learned later. And then we hear a shrill voice shout, James, is that Ed? James says back, yeah, he came home for a visit after a year. Then from around the corner waddles an extremely overweight woman in her early 40s. We shall call her Jabba because, well, you can probably already guess why. <laughs> Not the most clever name, but I'll allow it. Jabba. Hello, son. It's been a while. How are you? Ed, not looking her in the eye. Yeah, I'm fine, ma. James. Son, you look amazing. How did you lose so much weight? Ed? Uh, this is my friend Teach. He's been helping me through college. Uh, honestly, he's the reason that I am the person that I am today. Jabba? So, he's the one who made you gay. Only, he didn't say gay. He used a very specific F word, which we're not going to repeat on the channel. And I guess it is good that the cat is already out of the bag, so to speak. <laughs> like, okay, we're over the, the biggest hump so far. They let you back into their home, even with this knowledge. Maybe we're making progress, I hope. <laughs> OP tries to retort, what the? Ed cuts me off and pushes me back. Bob, we already went over this. You can't become gay. You either are, or you aren't. Jabba. Bullshit! I told you to straighten yourself out so you don't burn in hell. But if you insist on living this sinful life, then I... Ed. Hey, so why don't we just calm down and get something to eat? I'm sure you're both starving after being out all day. Jabba. Eh, I guess I could eat. Uh, honey, make the chicken tenders. Not shitting you, that is actually what she said. <laughs> At least she didn't call him tendies with honey mussy. <laughs> so that encounter ends, and Ed just looks at me and says, Don't say anything too bad. You'll just make her angry. But of course... I had an extremely hard time staying silent while this literal land whale insulted my friend and told him that he was going to hell for being gay. It's interesting, it doesn't seem to be attached to any like extreme religious beliefs because Ed's dad plays magic, which is of course, you know, a game invented by the devil. <laughs> Not Wizards of the Coast, the actual devil. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it, it just seems like legitimately they do not like gay people for seemingly no reason. Maybe it's like one of those genetic arguments. People are like, oh, you need to pass on your genes, etc., etc. Try and make it like a science-based argument instead of a religious-based one. 
But honestly, like, pass on your genes? Who cares, bro? What are you, Henry the <laughs> Eighth? It doesn't matter. If you want to reproduce, go ahead. But if you don't, okay. We got plenty of people on the planet anyways. Are your genes so amazing that you require your son to pass them down? Are you perhaps uh, a lord of some sort? <laughs> you have a kingdom that you're passing down through the generations? <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm still really confused about it, man. Uh, maybe we'll find out some more. So, throughout the next hour, there was something interesting that I noticed. Ed and his father caught up and played some magic together. There were no insults, no slurs, not even so much as a wince being thrown at him when Ed told him about his love life. It was just a father and a son spending some quality time together, playing some cards and catching up. But then, Jabba calls James into the kitchen and starts screaming at him about letting the tenders burn and wasting time playing stupid games with that gay son of his. He then struggled to apologize before she threw the pan at him and hit him on the head. It was at this moment when it all clicked. Ed's parents together were not the issue. It was only his mother. I'm telling you right now, James, you need to stand up for your boy. <laughs> but like, look, you don't talk about him that way. And she'd either respect you for it or, or throw another pan at you. <laughs> at least she can only hit you once with the pan. If she has a solid metal Sailor Moon pencil case, <laughs> she can hit you five, six times before you even know what's up. <laughs> so a pan's not that bad. That's an unfortunate nookie reference for the uninitiated. Uh, his mother was a shrill, sad woman whose only goal was to fill everyone's life with misery and sorrow before God finally decided to grace us and remove her from this earth. Yeah, I don't think that was God taking her back. <laughs> okay, into the eternal pit of fire you go. Somebody else was taking her back. She hated everything and had somehow manipulated James into giving up his dreams to take care of her. What was his dreams? I don't understand. Does he just want to chill out and play magic? That's a relatively easy dream to accomplish. But yeah, just because you're a man doesn't mean you have to eat endless shit sandwiches from your wife. Every once in a while, you gotta let her know how it is. Otherwise, the power dynamic is just completely out of whack. It's supposed to be a two-way street, you see? This dude is just getting pushed around and abused. Hit with a pan, that's definitely abuse. Like, 100%, and it is so not okay. How she managed to get James to give up his dream is really beyond me. To this day, it shocks me how this physically and verbally abusive land whale managed to manipulate anyone into staying with her. My hatred for this woman really could go on for pages, and it would still not be enough to sate the rage in my heart that I still feel at this woman, so I will stop it here. No, you can go on, that's okay. <laughs> I like detail. You gotta grab a hold of that impotent rage. Let it fuel you to something greater. Of course, if the rage is just gonna make you crumble, then yeah, you don't have to step into it. But I am always eager to hear, if you want to tell. <laughs> so after another couple of hours, some fast food arrives, and we all sit at the couch and start eating. All y'all gave up on the chicken tendies? <laughs> they got burned because he was playing magic, and then they got thrown across the kitchen because the wife has uh, some anger management issues, I guess. Ed finally graduated from neckbeard reform school, and took charge of his own life and confronted his mother about everything. It started with his sexuality, and it morphed into multiple different things, like the way that she treats people, the condition of the house, and the real dagger, how a woman who regularly cheats on her husband has the nerve to tell anyone what is a sin. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> who, who's bagging the land whale? What's going on there? And a married land whale at that? <laughs> Swear to God, dude. Some dudes are just such dogs. <laughs> 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 
Have you no shame at all? <laughs> uh, the fallout was, of course, going to be spectacular. Oh, that's what we tune in for, isn't it? <laughs> I want some fireworks. So, hearing all this naturally made her upset, and she began throwing all types of insults at Ed, including that lovely F word for gay people, which uh, gets used in this story quite a lot, but I guess because the mom used it quite a lot. She even began throwing things at him and James, and when James tried to calm her down, she shouted at him, Shut up! You're just as gay as him getting raped by your uncle! What kind of man are you? Jesus Christ, dude. To open up about something that definitely makes you feel so vulnerable to a woman that at the time you probably presumed loved you and then to have that thrown back in your face. I, I just don't have the words. This woman is vile. The foulest creature. Is she dead? Did heart disease relieve us of her yet? <laughs> Because if not, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Maybe something even more painful than that. A woman this evil deserves to suffer. James just started crying, and at this point, I had seen enough. OP, what the actual hell is wrong with you? Jabba, who the hell are you? One of his gay friends? OP, you say one more word, and I swear I will shove my foot inside of your ass jabba how dare you talk to me that way james get him out james just stays at the table as he should he wants some backup god damn it <laughs> jabba useless fucking man she then starts throwing things at me until i then decide to leave ed also follows me out of the house to the sounds of Jabba shouting, Don't come back until you've changed your sinful ways, you dirty gay lord! <laughs> but she didn't say gay lord. <laughs> this is such a scene to behold. I cannot imagine being a part of something like this. But I will say that Ed and OP definitely have like a, a stronger bond. It's called trauma bonding, okay? That is just, like, so absolutely wild. I want some vengeance. I want to see this woman taken down a peg or ten. Ugh. And at all this, Ed finally breaks down. So then I take him to my grandmother's house to get some rest. When we finally get there, my grandmother has a little talk with Ed, and it turns out that she knows his grandmother and is honestly friendly with her, I think they went to the same church or something. Oh, there's the religion. I knew it was somewhere in there. Talk about sin and all this stuff. So good. Okay, my theory holds up. <laughs> so she called her over to talk to Ed. The conversation when she got there was something that I always love to remember. This specific part will always stick out to me. So imagine this being said in the loving old school black grandma voice. I'm just going to do an old people voice. I'm not going to get all racial with the black grandma bit. <laughs> Child, if God wanted you to be straight, he would have made you straight. God don't make no mistakes, and he sure as hell don't send no one to hell just for sucking a little bit of dick. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Ah, you're killing me. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> as long as you live your life for him, then you always have a path into heaven. Oh, and don't worry about your nasty old mama. I'll talk some sense into her. And this finally gave Ed the one thing he was lacking that I could not provide. A family support system. Bless grandma, man. Why are the grandmas always the best in these stories? Ah, I just love grandma. <laughs> Every time, including my own grandma. Just the best examples of humanity. So, about another month passes, and Ed asks me to go talk to his dad with him. When we get to his house, his mom is gone for the day, thank God, and his dad wants to get some cleaning done. Is the mom the breadwinner? Is that why she's like, you know, overbearing and wearing the pants in the house? 
I don't understand what's going on 100%. I have so many follow-up questions. <laughs> but okay, Dad's cleaning house. We start talking about the situation with Jabba, and he just breaks down and tells us everything. How she convinced him to give up his dream and take care of her. How she spends his money that he got from his father's life insurance, and how he didn't have the courage to leave because she's the best I could do. You, you really believe that though? <laughs> Come on. That is a lie that she pounded into your head. Don't buy into that one. The only way that is the truth is if you flip reverse it, because he is the best that she could do. That <laughs> seems factual to me. So needless to say, OP is steaming at this point. I honestly couldn't believe that this woman managed to destroy this man, mentally and physically. It took literally slapping him in the face and shaking him to make him realize the truth. But after about three weeks, he finally mustered up the courage to leave this she-devil. Slapping him in the face and shaking him? That's a simple solution. <laughs> like a woman in the 50s? Get a hold of yourself, dame! <laughs> Man. Get a hold of yourself! Please, let me handle this. Uh, no, I think talking it out is a much more healthy way to handle it than hitting, isn't it? But okay, if it works, it works. And of course, when he was moving out, Jabba obviously protested, yelling, Why are you leaving me? Duh, bitch. <laughs> and, It was all my fault for manipulating her husband into leaving her. I know the irony. <laughs> but as much as she tried to protest, I managed to body block. Oh look, you're making bros with Ed's dad too. OP, he's not a bad guy. He's in it for the full nine. I remain cynical and want to know the underlying reason why. But overall, it is pretty nice. I bet OP is going to graduate from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! to Magic. And they're all going to be uh, Magic the Gathering champions or something like that. Is that how the story ends? Probably not. <laughs> of course, there were a few blows thrown at me. And she even spit on me. But as a good friend does, I bared it to give my friend and his father... A clean escape. Eventually, he manages to pack up all his crap and leaves her in that pit of a house to die by her lonesome with all those accursed cats. But as they left, they took with them a single kitten, the runt of a litter, a small black and white kitten that had to fight to survive. This cat took an instant liking to James, so he made sure that it got to stay in the only clean part of the house and as such, basically became his best friend. So it's no wonder that he decided that this particular cat would be his and his son's cat when they finally decided to leave. He named it Bolt because it was full of energy, loved to jump and climb all over everything, and Bolt to this day is still a happy cat who is indeed full of energy. It's always nice when you save a small animal's life. They'll always pay you back 100%. The dog that we have, Brownie is her name, because she's brown. <laughs> she was the runt of the litter too, and uh, actually her mom and all of her brothers and sisters ended up dying, but because we dewormed her and made sure she ate well, she developed into a, a happy, healthy dog. She is my first dog, officially. She is the coolest dog. Just a, a good, loyal hound. I'm sure the cat is loyal too, in its own way. <laughs> but now this leaves us with yet another problem. Ed and his father had nowhere to go. So they turned to the one place in town that they knew, the house of Jabba's parents. Uh-oh. Is that the grandma? I guess it is, but I don't know if I would go there, man. I think you're, like, still in the circle. Ugh. <laughs> I don't like that not too much. They were obviously open to Ed and James living with them, as they both loved Ed and thought that someone in their family would finally leave this small town and make something of himself. So they moved in with him until James managed to save up enough money for an apartment. There you go, get out of there ASAP. <laughs> Naturally, Jabba was pissed that her parents didn't take her side, saying, How could you side with that 
bitch of a husband and that gay son of his, don't they have any Christian value left? <laughs> oh, that irony. Mm, so thick, delicious, <laughs> creamy. Oh, Jesus. And then Grandma slaps the hell out of Jabba. For a 60-something-year-old woman, she had powerful hands. <laughs> Here we go at old school. She then said something along the lines of, How could you be that much of a hypocrite? And she has no room to talk about being a good Christian after sucking every pecker in this city. <laughs> oh, Grandma's too real, bro. <laughs> Jesus. It's like I raised you, but I gotta call it like I see it. Holy hell, I love it. <laughs> Jabba then stormed out of the house, threw a rock through her parents' window, and got on the bus <laughs> to head home because she couldn't drive. Wow, she can't drive? I'm surprised. She seems like such a productive member of society. <laughs> A rock through the window, and then she escaped from the cops by bus. <laughs> You're killing me. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. So, <laughs> this is where this part of the story comes to an end. Sorry for taking another three weeks for me to get this part out, but state testing, along with other obligations, keeps me extremely busy. Also, Sorry if this gets hard to read or sounds a little fake, as I tried to cram as much information into this part as I could in order to get through everything without this story getting too long to read. I'm looking forward to the next video, Moon Horse. I guess I gotta go watch Moon Horse's take on all this stuff. It's always nice to hear a different perspective, you know? Anyways, next time, we will address how I got both of them back into the dating world and got a bit of cosmic justice for Ed. Hopefully the next part will be out before too long, but that's all for me. Until next time, readers. Hot damn, and a merry story makes for a merry, merry Christmas. <laughs> I appreciate you guys taking your time out of the holidays, or if you're not watching this on a holiday, that's cool too. I mean, you're here, and that's what's most importantly. It's pretty amazing to me that OP was able to save two different people now. Granted, they're, they're blood relation, they're basically the same people. 50% of this genetic material is shared, but <laughs> to have them both, like, in your debt, essentially, it's a really cool thing. And OP hasn't even asked him for money yet. Be like, hey, bruh, <laughs> remember that time I, I convinced you to get out of your wife house? Let me borrow 50 bucks. <laughs> I don't know why I always have this, like, cynicism inside me. But it seems like the grandma of the story has the same cynicism. And uh, I really, she's my favorite character. <laughs> she just rocketed to the top of the list. I mean, I don't like uh, the, you know, corporal punishment on her kids. But at this point, her, her daughter is a grown-ass woman who probably does need to get the crap slapped out of her a time or two. Of course, that sort of treatment when she was younger might be the reason that she resorts to that as a grown adult. I don't know. It gets passed down in a bad way. Hopefully, Ed is going to be the one to break the cycle. Religion being a tool of persecution also puts a pretty sour taste in my mouth, but I guess that's been going on for <laughs> a lot longer than just this story. Still doesn't change my view on it. Oh, I, I am so glad. I hope at the end, in the epilogue, they'll be like, yeah, she died, and I'll say, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Uh, there's other beards that I want to dye more, but uh, this is a good candidate, you know, top 10 at the very least. <laughs> I hope you guys will let me know what you thought of it. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the story. Maybe share it around, a little bit of cringe miss cringe on somebody's uh, social medias or whatever. I would appreciate it. little uh, wholesome cringe, I guess. <laughs> 
I also hope you check out the links in the description. Plugs, podcasts, playlists. Yes, indeed. The three P's. We've also got my social medias. Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Hooray! (laughs) I'm everywhere, including Patreon. And I'd like to thank my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, generous patrons, Jerry, Jerry, much, as I do every video uh, with the foamy, the squirrel voice. So thank you. Robert Waits, Jarhead Jerry, Ura, Logan Wolf, arr, arr, River Jerry, Conrad, Conrad Inge, not Comrade. <laughs> Captain Cloud Jerry, Hong Kong, Aaron W, Twisted Child, Cinnamon Susie, Danny, Jerry Nerdnick, Furrod Lang Sign, Fire Drake, Giggle Jerry, Hee Hee, Ayurari, the most different Jerry Spelly, <laughs> Jari, the Pirate, <laughs> Livingston Loves Jerry, A, so does Red X, Rogue, Silent Revolver, The Original Jerry, Jerry, Becca, Jerish Kitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Matthew Simmons, welcome again, my friend, Satori, 211 Jerry, The Return of Jerry, A Bundle of Jerry's Come Afoot Your Toes, Oh, my toe, my toe. It's a Turtles in Time reference. <laughs> and again, welcome. A Jerry, a Jungle and Jerry's, a Justy Dragonian Jerry. <laughs> a Lunia, Althea Blue, Ananaki, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Atheist Jerry, So Euphoric, Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, Watch out for that guy. <laughs> Bits of Gravelin, Blade the Hero, Blameless Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, But Jerry, it's cold outside. Camille Sarah, Commander J Tank, Delta Rune Jerry, Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Dragon Shade, Aaron Lennox, Frozen Over Studios, Grand Tom got ran over by a reindeer. Rainbeard. <laughs> That's Mr. J. We also got Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, Itchy Nuts, Just Scratch a Bro, A Pimp Named J. Crisp, Yes, You Have to Say the Whole Thing, J.M. Coon, Jennifer Schaefer, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry, the Lady Dex, Jerry the Small Jerry, the Other Jerrys, Jerry the Outlaw Mother Truckle, Honk Honk, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingleheimer Smith, His Name is My Name Too, Actually, I'm Red X, though, <laughs> for real, Jolly Black Jerry, Sabufa, because if you're boofing this free, KJW Kajow, Kruhi, Miss Monday, Lord Jerryo, Leader of the Thunder Jerrys, Thunder Jerrys, Ho! Jack is rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mr. Carrot, 797, Goofy Eyes, Natari, Nightmare Jerry, Orgami Jerry Steve, Panda Prince Jerry, Phantom of the Pines, Jerrykins and Jerry Beth, Ramtide Lacrimates, I still haven't looked it up, <laughs> Rose Jerry Miller, TSM Kirby, Sarita the Lolita, Serrated Dash, Staples, aka Jerry Yeet, Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, Teddy the Police, Tenta Monster, The One True Fusky, Tom, Puts the Jerry on the inside, the counts, church, church, <laughs> Treeberg, Vigilante Justice, <laughs> Viking Jerry, we suspect the conspiracy is involved, the police deny any existence of Marble Jerry, dude, it's getting deep now, <laughs> what does the beard say, <laughs> Wilmax, Comrade Moody, Kira, you're a wizard Jerry, Redwind, Goose says honk, Jerry, Atric, <laughs> Naga Viper, Cy Jerry the Cyborg, a normal Jerry, I worry about Marble Jerry, we should ask Sherlock Jerry Holmes for help, <laughs> We can try. Hunter of Jerry's, devourer of all things tasty, it is Tom, Admiral T. Tank, Alunia, Amara, Atomic Jerryzilla, AZ, Babsy Coon, welcome back, friends. Banished Knight, Barbushka's Irradiated Jam, Broken Spine, Horseradish, The Original Different Jerry, Cake Jerry, California Jerry Girl, yeah, Canadian Lynx, Chevron 7 Locked, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> chia, 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 chia. Jerry, <laughs> my brain's melting. Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, come with me if you want the Jerry, come with me if you want the Jerry. <laughs> Furry Worry, Woo Jerry, Crypt Titties, Cuban Jerry, Defy Jerry, Dopamine Drought, not around here, bruh, Electrical Fennec, Ghost of Alpha, give him both inches, <laughs> it gets me every time, He Nods, HMT Mayor, Holy Berry Jerry, how's your short game, Jerry, <laughs> Hydra Jerry, Jeffrey, <laughs> welcome Jeffrey, can I say it like that, Jeffrey, I am Jeffrey, <laughs> what the fuck is going on, Tom and Jerry, or Jerry and Tom, <laughs> versus Santa Werebeard Apocalypse, Jerry in a Subaru STI, <laughs> Jerry Jerry Binks, Jerry Aldo Rivera, Jerry Bean, yum, Jerry Boxes, yay, Jerry role-playing game, Judge Jerry, an executioner, King Tom, smasher of Jerry Zillas, now we got a fight on our hands, Kitty Kin, Crafty Kitty Cat, Life of a Guardian, Little Land Woods, Lucia Lovecraft, maybe next time, Midnight Sun, Milkfed Gift, Miss Duchess, not Invisible Angel, I see you, one like Jerry, hoping for a new year, oh, it's coming, whether you want it or not, <laughs> Organic Cam, Ghosty, Raptorite, she's my Jerry Pie, go drink a Mountain Dew, what a bit surprise, cringe so good, make a grown man cry, sweet Jerry Pie, <laughs> Snarry the Snob Jerry, Spoonie the Rogue, Steampunk Alley, Terry, oh, the crippling duality of being both a Tom and a Jerry. <laughs> the Necro Jerry Con, the original Jerry, not the most different Jerry, maybe to Infinite Jerry and beyond. Definitely. Tuna Fish Jerry, Aquarium Escapee, <laughs> Zestaboo Jerry, Tom Promise, Jerry Swears, oh no, bad Tom, Tommy Good Boy, no Swish is facts, Swish Icy, go look it up, and buy it, I mean, uh, another Reddit video, if you want, whatever. <laughs> also, thanks to my $1 patrons. Whoo, a Merry Christmas indeed. <laughs> Thank you guys all so much for supporting on the Patreon. Obviously, I do hope some other people will consider supporting, but if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I mean, you came through, you watched the video, really, what else could I ask for? Except that maybe you come back and do the same thing again tomorrow. That'd be cool. I'll be right here. <laughs>
In order to do so, you need to take care of yourself, keep yourself safe, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some Oranx videos. I mean, it's Christmas, you got the day off, right? You good? <laughs> I'll keep you company. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. Oh, so worthy. And you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.